was beautiful. I, I loved Uganda. I loved my town, hometown, Saroti. We used to have a beautiful house, gardens, green greenery, sceneries. Um, just like I loved everything about Uganda. I've been thinking of going to back to Uganda, but I never had a chance to go there. Um, but I would love to go and see my uh, birthplace with my kids and show them where I was born and what it was like there and uh, how beautiful the country was. So, yeah, I would like to take my kids there. This was the fourth house we moved into and we had to consistently move into different houses. As a nine-year-old kid, it was very hectic to keep on moving consistently. It was hard to settle down in one place. As soon as we settled down, we had to move again. That's my dad. Miss him so much. And my dad was a very hard working man. <laughs> and when he came here, he worked so hard for us to have a better life. He had everything there. I had to lose everything. Came here completely from scratch. Built up his business. I miss you, Dad. Tickets to Uganda. Wow. Oh. Oh, it dream come true. I would love to go back. And heard on the news, on the TV news, we all, my parents were all gathered down in the sitting room and we all sat down and was watching that Idi Amin was, um, had uh, given us a th 90 days to get out of the country. And uh, we were thinking it was a joke. But uh, when we realized it wasn't a joke, we all panicked because what were we going to do? Because my parents were pack packed up and were going to India uh, for, for, um, for my aunt's operation and um, after that they were going to go to England to see my brother who was studying there but when we found out that uh, this is happening my mom wouldn't leave us alone so they cancelled the plan from going to India and England and instead started packing up for going to England all of us moving together well what my emotions were at that time was very mixed I was excited that oh we're going away somewhere but to me, Uganda has always been a home because I was born there and I was only 13. And um, it was like, what are, where are we going to go? How, what is going to happen to us? And do we have to leave our security, our, our safe and security from Uganda and go somewhere else? We don't even know where we're going to go. We don't know what to take, what not to take, but we were only, asked, we were only told that we can only take a suitcase each and only 50 pounds per family. So we were thinking, what are we going to do with just 50 pounds and just one suitcase? And we didn't know what to pack because we were not able, able to take anything which was, uh, which was what we were close to, My, like toys, books. In the transit, we lost a lot of uh, personal belongings like photographs, albums, um, records, tapes, everything was gone. So it was quite emotional that we, we couldn't bring anything back with us like that.
I never thought I would come back to Uganda, a place I once called home. It was exciting yet frightening to go to come out of Uganda, see everything. But as as we were going from uh, from Entebbe Airport to Kampala, which was my worst journey when we came from Uganda to London, it made my my day because it was beautiful. I saw it beautiful. People were really nice, and uh, seeing the flourishing country now, I'm glad I came back. Coming into Sarote is like you can see my as you can see I'm really really excited to see everything and see if it's the same or not. This is the place I used to live, the last place I used to live before we were expelled from Uganda. And uh, memories, I can still remember the stairs and everything. Bring me up, really memory that we used to, just imagine we used to stay in this house. My old house in my memory. My house was big and beautiful. Coming back, it was the old tiny flat about the petrol station. And the house was dull, cold. When we lived here, I thought this was the best house in the world. Even when we lived in this house, with simple life, we were happy and thinking, and thinking back back to me in England, we take everything for granted. Coming back here has made me appreciate and realize my family are more, more than anything to me. We used to go every Sunday to a hill which we call uh, it was the steps, there were steps, so it was, it, was, it was called a step hills. We used to go every Sunday there. All the all Ugandan, all those Asians there, we, the Sarotians, used to meet over there. And it was so beautiful, the sunshine on the, on the hills it was absolutely wonderful. We used to eat chips, we used to eat ice creams every single weekend. We used to go there, gather with friends, family, and um, until the sun went down, it was the most beautiful scenery you could ever imagine. And that's what that's always stayed in my memory and in my heart. I can't, I can't even explain how it was. It was just unimaginable. And seeing here now like a des completely deserted place, but now you can, as you can see, it's only 15 steps left. It's, it's sad to see like this. I would have loved to have gone once more right up to the top to see the sunset. Now we are on the way to my old school, Saroti Secondary School. The school hasn't changed at all. My old science lab is exactly the same as it was before. When I was at school, in my science lab, I used to sit here right at the front of this exact stool. This was my biology class. The head teacher was surprised that I remembered everything and I came back and he told me to come back to Uganda to stay. I was surprised and um, happy that uh, this is a reception I got from the, from the head teacher. This is the temple we used to come every Saturday. From a very young age, my father and my mother taught us that religion and faith is very important as it gives one hope and strength. 
the priest in the temple told me that this old temple was destroyed in 1972. So they rebuilt this one for the people in Saroti. Going back to Uganda has faded my bitter memories about Uganda as the people were very very friendly and welcoming. It felt like I never left. When we landed at Stansted Airport, we all gathered down with my family and we were taken to a, a place where they were giving us uh, warm clothes and um, made sure that we are okay, we ate and um, give us blankets, shoes and everything because we didn't have any shoes at the time. And uh, that gave me hope that at least we are here and there are so many kind people still in this world. After a few hours, we, was, we were put into the coaches and uh, taken to uh, Exeter, Honington, to a military uh, camp, which were turned into a refugee camp. And all of a sudden, we were shifted again from, from Honington to Wales. And it was like horrific because we journeyed from Saroti to Kampala, to Entebbe, to Stansted, to Honington, now to another camp. It was, it was as it was never ending. And finally, they have houses in South Wales. The house was really, it's a mining town and the house was really cold and we had to do quite a lot of work to make it like a, like a home. From Wales, we stayed about seven to eight years. And um, in 1978, I moved to London with my aunt and uh, to find a job because we needed money. We, to, we were financially not well off. So came to London and um, found a job. And my parents uh, moved after about six months and um, we, we, we stayed in Ilford. After that, a few months later, I met my husband and got married. And I had lovely, lovely kids, four lovely kids. And realized the house is not home. Home is where the loved ones are. 